My name is Vidya Peters. I'm the CEO of Data Snipper, and I am very excited to talk to you about how to stay relevant in the AI age today. So let's see if we can get my slides to come up. Can I get some help with the slides, please? This is why, oh, too much help. Let's not go so fast. Um, Data Snipper is an AI-powered platform used by audit and finance professionals. So this is a topic that's very near and dear to my heart today. Uh, let's start with the number $15.7 trillion. That is how much AI ex is expected to contribute to the global economy by the year 2030. Uh, earlier this year, one of the largest banks in the world, HSBC, ran a very interesting experiment. They took their traditional customer service uh, representative and they took an AI agent and they had them both take calls from customers. And two very interesting things happened. Number one, customers actually preferred the AI agent. They found them to be very fast, very uh, accurate, and very attentive. But a second thing happened. The human agents took on new roles. So instead of just answering, what's my balance, or let me order a new card, or let me show you how to do this, they focused on advice. They focused on human empathy. They talked about nuanced strategies in investment. They helped alleviate the concerns of the customer. I share this story because it gives us a little glimpse into the years that I believe will unfold as AI and human beings coexist alongside each other, and they will. Because here is how the workplace is evolving. There are three major changes that we're already seeing play out. Number one, repetitive tasks are going to AI immediately. Human beings are focusing on the value-added activities, critical thinking, problem-solving, strategic decision-making. We're seeing new jobs show up. How do you handle the ethics of using AI? How do you think about data scientists? How do the, the systems and programs coexist with AI? And last but not least, Everybody now is expected to be in a hybrid skill role. Someone very wise said, you will not be replaced by AI, but you will certainly be replaced by somebody who uses AI. And so the question that every CEO today is asking everyone at their company is how are you using AI tools to be a little bit more effective in your role? If you don't know the AI tools that are being used in your function, in your industry, you are already behind. But there are two things that have not changed since the beginning of humanity. Number one, it's the human capacity to adapt, to continuously learn, and to move with the times. And the second is the human capacity to coexist with technology. Now, many of you in this audience are a lot younger than me, but let me tell you about the advent of the internet. There were similar fears around people losing their jobs, around human beings and their jobs getting redundant. And yet, we have shown a profound ability to be able to adopt, adapt, and really allow ourselves to coexist alongside the most modern, innovative, emerging technologies that come. Let's take a look at how this is playing out in a couple of industries. In healthcare, traditionally when you went in for an MRI or x-ray, I actually just had one a few months ago, you don't get a readout till seven days later because those readings go to someone who analyzes it. This is already changing. Doctors today can use AI to instantly get the results of the reading of your MRI or X-ray, allowing them to quickly move on to prescribing treatment for their patient without losing time in the process. Better accuracy, better care for their patients. In agriculture, farmers are using AI-powered drones to understand soil conditions, to monitor crops, and to better allocate the use of water and fertilizer. This is allowing them to do more with less in an industry that's already under tremendous financial pressure where there's a shortage of labor. This is really allowing farmers to innovate and to be able to become more profitable, more efficient, more effective with the limited resources that they have. Protecting rainforests in South America. Today, governments are now using AI powered technology to monitor forests in real time so that when there's illegal logging, they can quickly alert local authorities and take action before more damage is done. 30% of the jobs as we know it today could be automated by 2030. This is an estimate and I have no doubt that it will get close to this number. 
But I think in that opens up a tremendous opportunity for us to play higher up in the value chain, where creativity prevails, for allowing us to move human beings with emotion, with creative work. I just don't see AI writing another Godfather script like Francis Coppola did. Emotional intelligence. I always talk about this with, uh, with my teams, but knowing the answer is the easy part. But how do you mobilize hundreds of people to get behind you, your vision, your answer, to get excited and to rally together to make change happen? This still requires human ingenuity, it requires leadership, it requires empathy. And that is an area that will never go away. And strategic thinking. AI is very good at analyzing known data, but how do you look around corners? How do you think about the unknowns and the big picture and make decisions in relation to them? Human beings still have a very important role to play in all of these areas. I want to look now a little bit closer at one of the oldest professions in the world. A lot of people don't realize that audit has existed for more than 20,000 years. Here's an Ishanga bone in what is modern day Congo, and it was used to actually keep a record of all of the trading of cattle that happened between various tribes in Congo. These are the tally marks on a bone. And what we actually find is that audit and accounting have been the bedrock of civilization, all the way from the Mesopotamian and uh, the Egyptian civilization through the Middle Ages when the first trading guilds were created in what is modern day Europe, to the Industrial Revolution when the first accounting standards were created, to the 20th centuries when companies went public, and to the modern era when we have Sarbanes-Oxley and at the end of Enron created a whole set of new accounting standards for companies to comply with. And through all of that time, we saw technology. <laughs> Whether it was the abacus in 2000 BC, we saw the manual calculator in the 17th century. We saw the personal computer come out in the 1950s. Surely QuickBooks would be the end of the accountant and the auditor when it came out in the early 2000s. We had robotic process automation in 2010. And of course we have now the AI and LLMs. But I wanna talk about what changed and what didn't. The level of complexity in the way we do business has only increased with time. There's more data, there's more regulation, there's more requirements. Technology has only become more sophisticated and more modern. We have seen that from the abacus all the way to where we are today with AI. But here's what hasn't changed. It's the need for trust. Our entire society, and this is why audit is one of the oldest professions, our entire society and civilization operates on trust. You get up in the morning and you buy a ticket to come to Web Summit, you ride a train, you buy organically sourced coffee, and you believe and trust that all of that happens. But someone is working behind the scenes to ensure that your taxpayer dollars go towards that public transportation, that the airline does what it says it will do, and those beans are truly organically sourced. We take for granted, but there's an entire economy working behind the scenes so that you and I can operate on a model of trust. And yet this is an industry under siege. We talk about the great resignation during COVID, but this industry has been losing people by the droves every year. There are fewer and fewer accounting graduates joining every year. No one wants to major in accounting anymore. And when they join, they get so burnt out by the work, the long hours, how manual and detail oriented the work is that they are leaving uh, th the profession permanently. And this has created one of the biggest shortfalls. And this is not just in America, it's in Europe, in Asia. It's a global phenomenon where there are fewer and fewer people, fewer people to do this critical work that our society and civilization relies on. And it's keeping the firms up at night. Recruiting and retention is the number one issue that auditors are concerned about. And yet the security authorities find four in 10 audits to be flawed. So what does this mean? Take a moment to think about this equation. Fewer people joining the profession, more people leaving it, and the audits are absolutely flawed and in very poor shape. And when trust fails, it really stops us in our tracks. Six trillion dollars in global fraud losses. And for every dollar that's lost, it costs a company four times as much to make up for that loss in trust. 
So the billion dollar question we ask ourselves in this industry is could AI take the grind out of accountancy? And what we are finding is this, in this very, very conservative industry where these are not the fastest adopters of technology, they tend to be very conservative, very shy about taking on anything that's speculative, AI is already replacing huge amounts of manual, painful, error-prone work, allowing auditors to do more strategic advisory, more strategic relationship building with their customers. And that trust in AI is growing. Just in the last year, you find auditors trusting AI more. They're adopting it more during the busy season. But this is my favorite part. It's improving their quality of life. An almost 20 percentage point improvement in their work-life balance because of what AI is bringing. I share this example because AI has tremendous potential to replace some of the most mundane, painful parts of the work, freeing up people to do the more strategic work, especially in the case of accounting and audit, the reason why they joined the profession, to be able to advise customers and be strategic thought partners to them on the business. And I don't believe AI can ever replace the auditor. In this particular industry, so much of their work is nuanced. It's not objective, right or wrong. It's in a sea of gray of assessing trade-offs and risk profiles and interpreting laws, interpreting accounting standards, and helping companies make the best decisions. I don't see the SEC deposing the LLM anytime soon to ask them why it signed off in an audit for a Fortune 500 company. People pay for the expertise. They pay for the credibility of what auditors bring to the table, the years of experience. And last but not least, it's not just about exposing risk. It's about advising clients on how to mitigate those risks, how to build a stronger company so that you and I can trust them to do business. Look, I'm not standing here and saying this is going to be the case for every industry and every job out there. God knows there are a lot of wonderful jobs over the last century that no longer exist today. But we have a tremendous opportunity to adopt AI. And no matter what field you are in, whether you're a marketer, you're a designer, you're a programmer, you are in operations, you're an SDR, you're doing sales outbound, and ask yourself the question of how you could be leveraging AI to do that job more effectively today because it is a tool, it is a resource that allows all of us to move up the value chain and do the higher value work that is possible in our industry. So at the end of this, I would love to ask you a question, which is, as you're spending your time in various sessions today and meeting other people, think about if you were to fast forward your own industry 10 years from now and you were to write the narrative of, hey, AI replaced the jobs in my industry, what would that look like? And how would you rewrite that story in your favor? How would you adopt more tools and technology today and use them to your advantage and position yourself in the industry where you are playing in a space that is not replaced but actually valued here for the long term? I hope you have a great web summit. Really hope you get the most out of the sessions here today and thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it.